Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to my house. That's Justin's house. In this video, we're continuing my discussion about Azure DevOps and ServiceNow integrations. And a special shout out to Jim, my colleague, who made a point that in my synchronization of stories to Azure DevOps, when there's a comment added in Azure DevOps, it updates the story, but it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't at all actually, update the incident or update the customer service task. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do that, okay? So let's explain what I'm talking about real quick so you can follow along. Here I've got a story that's being synchronized over to Azure DevOps. Someone added a comment. Here's a comment, we're on the case. Now let me show you Azure DevOps. This is this story right here. Here, there is a delay in the impact jobs as long as delay is 540. So someone came in and put in a comment, here's a comment, we are on the case, and it came over to ServiceNow to the story record. Notice though that this story record is actually linked to an incident, 31582. If I go to that story record, let's just search for it here in the global search. Um, we'll just hop right over to that result and we'll see in the incident record, the note's not there. So whoever's managing the incident or substitute customer service task, they wouldn't see that that note got added from Azure DevOps. And I wanna show you how to fix that. So for now, we're gonna hide Azure DevOps and we're gonna go build ourselves a flow in Flow Designer that's gonna handle this for us. Now the flow in Flow Designer is gonna use a trigger of the journal table or sys journal table. It's where comments are stored in ServiceNow. So I'm gonna call this copy comments from story to parent record for ServiceNow sprinters, right? We're gonna limit this just to the assignment group, just like we did everything else in our previous videos in this series, so that it's not gonna run for groups that are not synchronized to Azure DevOps. I only want it to run when I'm doing this integration with Azure DevOps. Now, could you do this for other use cases where you need to copy comments from child records to parent records? 100% yes, you could. But for my purposes, we don't need to do that. Let's go ahead and copy the flow name down to that description. And I'm waiting for that application to load up there. We should be in the global scope for this. And as soon as it's done, I'm, it's done, I'm gonna hit submit. There it is. As soon as I said submit, it popped up. I'm not even gonna need to edit that out. So we're gonna start with our flow here and we're gonna add a trigger. And that trigger is gonna be something is created, all right? So I'm not gonna do created or updated. I'm not gonna do um, those other options there, updated or daily schedule. I just want when that comment gets added for the first time from Azure DevOps, and we're gonna pull that from sys journal underscore field. You'll see what that looks like here in a second. Sys underscore journal underscore field. It's gonna be a journal entry record. Now let's go take a look at that table so you can follow along with what I'm doing here. If we go to that table, by typing this into the navigation menu, dot list will take us to the table. You'll see that on that table, it has the table name, it has the element that was added, in this case, work notes, the other one would be additional comments or comments, I think. The element ID is the sys ID of the asset record, and then the value is the comment. Well, we're look, working with stories, so let's go to rm underscore story. If we go to that one, we should see that comment. We can see it, we, are, we see it, we are on the case. That's the one we were looking at earlier, right? Let me get off of that there, right there. We see it and we're on the case. And we can see the sys ID for that. So I need a couple of things when I'm doing that trigger. I wanna filter on RM story. And then after we do that, then we're gonna do some if logic to filter it down even more. So let's go update the trigger. We're gonna add a condition and we're gonna say, that the name is rm underscore story because that was the name of that column for rm story, it's name, and that's our table name. So we're gonna filter it there, I'm gonna hit done, and that's all we're gonna do there. So now this is only gonna fire when someone adds a comment on a story record. Now we're gonna say, um, actually I wanna look up that story record, so we're gonna look up a record, and we know it's gonna be a story because we're filtering on the story. So let's go ahead and pull up the rm underscore story table. And then we're gonna filter on that looking for the sys ID is the trigger, uh, I believe it was element ID. So you see the sys ID is right there. So we'll just go by trigger here, journal entry record and element ID. So we're making sure that the sys ID is equal to the element ID from that journal entry record and that'll give us the story, right? So this has the story that we're gonna connect to the parent record on and the trigger has the actual comment itself, okay? You following along? So now we're gonna say if that particular story, so we're gonna look up the story record and we're gonna say if the story record uh, what do I want to say here? If the story record is assigned to the uh, ServiceNow Sprinters group, so let's filter on assignment group, 
And actually, I want to filter even more. So let's go, not the assignment group, because then I'd have to look up the assignment group. Let's go look up record, story record, the assignment group right here. And then I'm going to type in their name as ServiceNow Sprinters. So now I'm limiting it to it's only going to do what's after this if statement if it was a comment on a story and that story is assigned to the ServiceNow Sprinters group. And I'm going to do one more and the parent of that story record. So we'll just go down here to parent. Um, if you remember in our previous videos, we're setting the parent of the story record to the incident or to the customer service task. So let's just go to the parent record and let's make sure that task type is an incident. So I'm just going to search for incident. There we go. So now it's only going to fire if it's assigned to ServiceNow Sprinters and the parent task is an incident. And we know we did customer service task before, so we have to do the same thing. Um, so this will work for both workflows. We don't have to make another one for customer service task. So we'll scroll down here to parent and check that task type is a choice. And if you remember from that video, it's not customer service task. Unfortunately, it's task um, is the name of that one. So we'll scroll down here to the T's, uh, S-Q-R-S-T. There I have task and task. One of these is going to be the customer service task. And one of these is going to be the out-of-the-box task table. I'm going to go the S I send underscore customer service task. The table name would come before task because S comes before S. So I'm going to bet it's this one. We won't know until we actually test it, uh, but that's okay. So now I've got my conditions and all I want to do now is I want to add a work note to the parent record. So we're going to go to actions. We're going to search for work notes. All right. If you look, if you, it's actually showing up in my recent, but if you're on your instance, just go down to ITSM and there'll be add work note. It's really simple there. You got to select a task. The task we're going to select is the parent of the story record. All right. So we're just going to navigate to look up record, story record, and parent. So remember that parent record could be an incident. It could be a customer service task if we pick that right task table. And then the work note, I'm going to go ahead and say story comment added colon, and then I'm going to select that um, trigger. And if we look at the trigger, the journal entry record, I believe it was value was the comment. Let's go check. Yep, value is the comment there. So let's go ahead and select value. And so story comment added, let me make sure there's a space in there. And then it would be the comment there. So it'll show up in the actual incident record or the customer service task. And uh, yeah, that's all I need there. So I'm going to hit done. And we're going to save this. And I'm going to be uh, risky and I'm going to go ahead and activate it and we're going to create a new incident together and test all this all the way through. So let's activate. We'll head back over to service operations workspace here while that's activating and we are going to create a new incident. Should be done there. Yeah, so that flow is activated successfully. We're going to create a new incident and this is going to be demo uh, for YouTube and we'll call this one um, copy comments to parent record. All right, so we could differentiate it from my other demos for the YouTube. We'll just put that in the description and the caller will set to Abraham Lincoln if we'll pull up here, there he goes. And the assignment group uh, is gonna be ServiceNow Sprinters because that's gonna kick off that flow that we already did to create it in Azure DevOps. So let's go ahead and bring Azure DevOps back here in the background and before I hit save. So I got the description, short description, caller, and the assignment group. So let's go ahead and save that. Where's my save button? Let's scroll down here, save. And what we're gonna wanna watch here after the saves is the comments, should have everything we need in there. So it's gone ahead and done that and we should see a comment come through here that the um, the story was created there. The story 10032 has been created and assigned to ServiceNow Sprinters. Um, we can actually we'll just stay here on this screen. Let's go back to Azure DevOps behind my head here. We'll go to work items and we should see, I'll scroll down and scroll up, scroll down and scroll up. There it is. Uh, is it there? I don't see it yet actually. Let's, let's just go somewhere else and then go back to work items. This should be, the name of this one should be demo for YouTube is what I'm looking for. And I'm not seeing it yet. It did create the story record, so I know the story was created. I've had this problem in Azure DevOps 2 where it doesn't show up right away. I'm just going to refresh the whole page. Oh, there it is. As soon as I hit refresh, it showed up at the top above living room temperatures. Let's wait for it to... No, it actually refreshed. Okay, maybe the refresh did it. All right, so let's open that up. There's the demo for YouTube, comments to parent record. And we'll say, um, you know, someone, a developer is actually responding that we're on it. So we can say, we see this incident and are working on a fix 
ASAP, right? So they're making sure they communicate and everybody knows what's going on. The integration itself is going to copy that to the story record, but the flow we just made should copy that story comment up to this incident record, and we should see that show up right here in the middle. I'm just going to bring out my little annotation tool, and there it is. Story comment added. We see this incident and are working on the fix ASAP. So that's it. We actually did that. Um, I'm going to go back to Flow Designer just to show you how that actually executed so you can see and follow that logic through. Let's open Flow Designer here, and we're going to go to Executions right there we don't need azure devops anymore there's where it ran and it's complete and we can follow step by step the journal entry was created um, so that is the trigger there and the filter condition was true because um, it was on the story table so it looked up the story record we have 10032 right there which is a story record and then we can see that it did this logic to make sure it was an incident or a task and then it added the work note to the incident so you can see incident there's the work note there in the middle where it got added so just a couple of lines in the flow designer and we were able to solve that dilemma of comments just coming to the story record but not necessarily coming to the parent record where that story was created from so now every Everybody has all the information they need when we're synchronizing tasks, whether that be incidents, whether that be customer service task, or any other task in ServiceNow. All of this will still work. You may need to change your filters and your conditions and what records you're creating, but hopefully through this series of videos you can see we can integrate these two things very easily and then use Flow Designer to do lots of automation, especially on things like comments in this video. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in replicating comments to from child records to parent records. And a special thanks to Jim for suggesting this video. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.